Laura Hall calls out for her two kids, Aiden and Mia to hurry as they are late. Laura is driving the kids to her soon-to-be ex-husband, Richard Hall. The couple has been going through some tough times after Richard fell in love with a woman called Grace Marshall. Laura and the kids get to Richard's house. Richard gives the kids some money to get candy while he speaks with Laura. Richard confesses that he intends to marry Grace in a couple of months so the two should finalize their divorce. Laura is devastated but she fakes a smile appearing happy for Richard. She walks into another room, gets a drink, and then eliminates herself. Her death hits the kids hard, especially Mia who spends most of her days crying. Richard tries to console Mia but she chases him away believing him to be the reason their mother took her own life. Fortunately, Aiden understands Mia and the two find comfort in one another. Six months after Laura's death, the family has gone back to a state of normalcy. Mia has a toy house that she and Aiden spend their time playing in. The house is a replica of their mountain lodge and in the dining area, there are little figurines of the Hall family. A few days before Christmas, Richard tells his kids that he wants them to spend time with Grace at the family's remote Massachusetts lodge. The kids refuse to stay there without their father. The kids hate Grace intensely since she is the reason their father left their mother leading to her death. The kids decide to investigate who Grace is as they know her as a woman their father had met at work. The kids find that Grace was the sole survivor of a mass self-elimination that had been led by her father. She had met Richard when he was researching a book about an extremist Christian cult. The kids find some voice recordings of Grace's father urging the cult members to repent. They also see that all the members had the word sin written on duct tape on their mouths and were covered in purple material. Richard startles the kids asking them what they are doing in his study. Aiden explains that Mia is helping him with his school assignment since his computer isn't working efficiently. Richard requests the kids to rethink the lodge as Grace wants to meet them. He also mentions that he intends to marry Grace so the kids should be accustomed to her presence. Soon, the kids pack up for the mountains. Mia takes the figurine of her mother which she never parts with. The family picks up Grace along the way. She enters the car with her small dog. She greets the kids but they are not enthusiastic about replying. The drive is a long one and the kids fall asleep halfway through. Finally, they get to the house at night. Richard gets the house in order ensuring that there is enough food and fuel to keep the family comfortable. He has to return to the city for work but he will be back for Christmas. Grace settles into the master bedroom. She has some pills that she normally takes so she takes special care in keeping them. The family has dinner and Grace is shaken when the kids first pray before eating. At night, Grace's attention is drawn to the cross hanging by the wall. The house has a variety of Catholic iconography that makes her bothered even though she does not show it. The next day, Grace wakes up to the kids playing outside in the snow. She joins the family but the kids approach her and demand the hat she is wearing as it belongs to their mother. Soon, Mia is playing with her figurine when it lands in water. Grace notices this and goes to help warning Mia to be careful near that area. She offers to retrieve the figurine but her weight is too much that the ice breaks causing her to sink into the cold water. Luckily, Richard gets to her and takes her to the house to get some warmth. Grace rushes to her room to take her pills while Richard gets a call asking him back to work. Richard does not want to leave the kids with Grace feeling under the weather. However, Grace explains that all will be well and that Richard should fulfill his work obligation. Richard gives Grace his gun locker combination so that she can retrieve the gun if need be. The family says goodbye to Richard who promises to be back soon. Grace calls the kids to help her decorate the house but she gets no answer. She decides to do the decorating herself. Later, Grace asks Mia what she wants for Christmas. Mia says that she would like a bulldog. Grace shares that she also wanted a dog for Christmas but her religious father would not allow it. When she grew up, she bought a dog as a present for herself. She shares that her dog is the sign of the new life she has always wanted. Mia asks Grace if she wants to see the present they made for their dad. The video turns out to be a collection of videos the family has had over the years including Christmases and Thanksgivings. Grace finds it to be too much to watch the kids and Richard with Laura so she leaves. In the evening, Grace calls out to the kids asking them if they want to eat. The kids do not respond even though Grace had heard them laughing a few seconds before. Grace fixes a sandwich and sits in the dining area. However, she cannot shake the thought that Mary's portrait is staring at her so she removes it from the wall. Grace gets out of the shower to find an inscription on the mirror. As she rubs it away, she notices Aiden peeping at her through the open door. Later that night, Grace goes to the kids' room. She is taken aback by the little altar the kids have created for their mother. 
The silence of the night is interrupted when Grace walks to the piano and bangs on it loudly. She goes to the kids' room and sees Mia and Aiden sleeping together. On Aiden's bed, there is a body covered in purple material. Grace wakes up, thankful that it was a dream. She hears Mia calling out to her so that she can help her find her toy. Grace finds the toy stashed in a box under her bed. She cleverly hides the doll near her dog making Mia believe that the dog had grabbed it at night. Grace approaches Aiden and rebukes him for peeping at her in the shower. Later, Aiden makes some hot cocoa for Grace. When Mia complains of being cold, Aiden offers to light up a gas heater. The three watch a movie but the noisy heater disturbs Grace. Grace also wonders if it is safe for the heater to be in the house but Aiden reassures her. Grace wakes up outside. The ice suddenly breaks and she finds herself drowning. She tries to get back up but her father is in the water with her and he pulls her down. During the struggle, Grace wakes up from the nightmare in the kids' room. She tries calling her phone but the phone is off. Grace tries the switches but the lights are down too. Furthermore, the fireplace is cold. She realizes that all of their personal belongings are missing. Even the food supplies are gone too. She is devastated when she finds her pills missing and assumes that the kids are joking. However, when she finds that their stuff is missing too, including Mia's figurine, she believes the kids. She is also shocked to learn that she has been sleepwalking every night. Aiden tells Mia that he had a dream of the gas heater malfunctioning and they had all suffocated. The three try looking for Grace's dog but they cannot find it. Grace packs up a few things intending to go to the gas station and get help. Aiden advises her not to go but Grace does nonetheless. Grace walks for a while in the harsh weather. Soon, she comes across a cabin shaped like a cross. Grace approaches it, hoping to get help but she freaks out when she sees her father beckoning to her. She continues walking eventually going back to the lodge. By the house's entrance, she sees some footsteps leading up somewhere. She finds some flowers and pictures of Aiden and Mia. The kids open the door and allow her to come inside. Aiden looks at the picture which has the words in loving memory beneath it. Aiden believes that the three have died but Grace questions this, as a dead person cannot feel cold, hunger, or emotion. That night, Grace hears her father's voice asking her to repent. This voice continues to torment her for the next few days. Grace comes back to the house to find the kids praying fervently. On the table, there is a newspaper article showing that the three had died of carbon monoxide poisoning on December 22nd. This explains why Grace had found the clock's dates fast forwarded to January 9th. Aiden asks Grace to repent but Grace refuses. To prove his point, Aiden hangs himself. Grace watches in shock as Aiden starts talking despite having a noose around his neck. Grace prays under the very portrait she had placed down but her father's voice keeps on tormenting her. In an empty room, we hear the voice coming from an old radio. Shortly after this, the kids watch as Grace sinks into depression. This increases after she finds her dog frozen to death. She enters a catatonic state refusing to leave the porch. The kids confess that everything was a prank including the recordings, stealing the items, and the hanging. The kids get Grace into safety and give her the medication she needs. Unfortunately, they are unable to turn on the generator. The kids soon find Grace punishing herself by kneeling on the fireplace. She now believes that she is in purgatory and hopes to do penance so that she can ascend into heaven and be with the angels. The kids are scared and since their phones are now dead, they decide to hide in the attic. In the morning, Mia has to use the bathroom so she leaves the attic. Grace soon finds her and makes her go back to the attic. She says that the kids have to sacrifice something and she burns Mia's figurine. She is about to eliminate herself with a gun when Richard arrives. Richard tries to convince Grace to put the gun down but Grace fires at him to prove her point. Richard dies and the kids run to him. However, Aiden knows that soon Grace will be after them so he urges Mia to run. The kids get into their dad's car and drive off. Unfortunately, the car gets stuck in the snow so Grace catches up. She leads the kids back inside the house. She prepares a meal and sets it on the dining table with Richard's corpse too. Grace sings a song prompting the kids to join. She then duct tapes their mouth with the word sin written before reaching for the gun.